All right, welcome everybody to the conference qualifiers for Vessel Spring 2024 Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Edition. My name is Pirate J. I'm joined here with Captain Itsoka, and we've got 200 plus high school teams in the North Carolina state ready to battle it out during the qualifiers for that grand prize of $25,000 cap. Big money, big stakes. Are you ready to get into it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've been with the Varsity Esports League for a while now, and every single season, it just keeps getting better and better. And to see that nice chunk of change on the line, oh my goodness, I just Ooh. know that the competition is going to be even better than ever, better than all the seasons past, and I am just so glad that I get to be here for it. So yes, I am very ready to get this next season of Vessel Smash underway. I mean, you guys can tell we're ready. We got Battlefield right behind us. We're ready for the battle to commence. I want to discuss very briefly the format here because we're in that group stage. Uh, teams playing against different teams to get through this qualifier run. And what's interesting at Soka is a lot of these high school teams actually have three players. So it's not just that one player's three players. You're going to have uh, player one from each team play against each other in a best of three. Then player two from these teams play each other in a best of three. Well, what, what do you make of these, like, uh, I don't know, varied team sets? Well, I mean, it makes sense to me. I mean, it kind of sounds like a 3v3 crew battle, but instead of counting stocks, as it would often uh, occur in competitive, especially in the collegiate scene, where each team would get a total, a total set stock. Say if it was 3v3, then you'd get a total of nine, right? So then mm. um, essentially you would battle on until all nine stocks are gone. But in this sense, uh, it's still a crew battle with a total of nine player. Uh, well, actually, if it's a three on three, then it would be uh, again six. So six, again, yeah. it's, right. So instead of just counting your stocks, because again, each player gets three stocks a piece, which is a total of nine. So mm. in, instead of counting stocks, you're just doing a best of three right off the rip. So it's one best of three, then another best of three. And then another best of three in a best of three format. So again, it's like threes cubed. You know what I mean? It's like threes all around. So it's it. it's it's like a crew battle, but at the same time, it's also not like crew battle. It's more just like three separate one v ones, if that makes sense. I can do with that. I can do with separate one v ones. It's gonna take a lot of pivoting and adaptation, I think, from us on the booth. But at Soka. That's what we signed up for. And that's what these players signed up for as well. Let's get these vessel qualifiers underway, folks, for our first two high school teams competing against each other in the qualifier set. We're ready to go. You can tell. So let's jump into our first match. I want to get a taste of our first fighters as well. So we can see what we're dealing with today. What kind of fighters will we have Ooh. two that we know and love, Cap? Oh, well, we're going to have Falco and Kirby, and this is going to be really, really interesting because, again, you know, they're both relatively, like, solid, speedy characters, and I, and I think especially Falco. And one thing that Falco loves to do, and this is why it's going to be maybe a little kind of duplicitous in a way because Falco, they love to juggle. They love to go for the up tilt into the up air, and they love to just bring their opponents all the way to the ceiling, right? Whereas Kirby, Kirby's a very floaty character, so, you know, they can operate in the air and make them and again you know can spend a lot of time in the air but i don't know if that's going to actually be good for this kirby pick or it's actually going to hurt them as already they miss the up b they miss the ledge grab and they fall right into the blast zone first stock gone already off of nan sahala it might just burn them in the end. We're starting to see those combos take place on this Kirby from Nantahala. And we're seeing that floating as well. But it does kind of remind me, Cap, of that game you play in the living room when you have a balloon, a birthday balloon, and you're just hitting it in the air. Juggle, juggle, juggle. It's what Falco does best. And look at that back air connect. They see that hammer come out. And Caldwell is ready to punish. Absolutely, and honestly, it's uh, Falco's up tilts uh, that are the most devastating. Again, if they can like just get you in the air again, you saw them go for that down throw into the forward air, and again, that is great combination because that's going to be some nice quick damage, and that's how Falco works. You know, very quick, very speedy. They find an opening and they make the most of it. But right now, you can see Kirby starting to make a rebuttal here on this first stock, but it's still three stocks to one. Game number one, nearly in the books here, and is going in the favor of Caldwell. Going punch in the favor of Caldwell, indeed. Cupcake, no, you gotta jump, you gotta float, you gotta up B just to get back on that stage. Let's see some edge guarding as well. No, the grab comes in from that Falco of Caldwell. 
gets a shield as well into the dodge and then the F smash. Goodbye, oh, Nandahala and Caldwell starts off strong. Yep, and here we go already. That is a one win in the favor of Caldwell. So if I'm uh if I am assuming correctly, then if Caldwell were to win again, then they will take game number one, and that is gonna be one point in their favor. So already that is how my understanding of this format is. So Caldwell already has one win going into the three, three. If they win another one, then one, that is going to be one point to Caldwell. One point there. To the side of Caldwell, another win here for this Falco should give the first of what could be two wins for Caldwell to push through. First group stage win, but it all comes down to that momentum continuing in the favor of this Falco. Still, Cupcake struggling to land some of these F smashes. These F tilts are just not working out, but how about it down there? That'll get some good damage on the Falco, at least to start with. Kirby is just so pretty. It's not, it's really not doing any favors right now. I was wondering if it could go out of the way. Yeah, it was Falco. Again, they don't want Kirby in the air. That's so they can deal with those damage. And they're following it up with these great four layers. And they're following it up, of course, with the up airs as well. And in the final destination, there are no platforms. It's a solid stage. There's nothing to go to. And I think that would make it harder for Kirby. As now Falco off stage is able to send Kirby into the blast. And you would think that down special would help Kirby when Falco seems to be in a vulnerable state, but it actually assisted them as soon as they left that down B special. Falco punished. He was right off the edge and knocked out Cupcake. Cupcake, this is something where we're going to need to see those changes. I like the adaptations out of the shield and try to get the smashes. That's going to be the first stock off of Caldwell. This matchup is a lot closer than we didn't touch that year before. It was a one to the three stop. You got the same thing that was called out. Now this time, you got two stop to be two stop. But with that being said, it was already 56% damage that has been done to this curve. And this is where you get dangerous. You see this Falco that's trying to take a game on yeah, and that's where a lot of that damage has been dealt. A lot of those finishing moves from our Falco has been seen, and they got him in that situation once again. Going to join him down in the depths below, and Cupcake will be the one to not resurface. That position has just been such a difficult spot for Cupcake. You can tell that the Falco from Caldwell, they just make us love going on these They want to actually take Kirby Again, trying to go for that bait and stick on the main stage. Yeah, Falco has really been taking advantage of it. Yeah, that's, the, that's the type of tech that you have to bring when you're coming into a competitive scene stage. Harry come out from the Falco, and now they want to take advantage of this edge guarding. Definitely still holding onto the stage control and punishing that down B special. Oh, but they missed the edge. Falco just barely gets back on, gets the grab. The laser combo goes up for the finisher, but Cupcake with the air dodge just gets out of it, but it's not enough. The hammer's out, but so is Cupcake as Caldwell wins their first match. Oh, oh, exactly. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that should be a first point going the way of Caldwell, given that that was the first best of three. And also, don't forget the smile, Pyro. I saw that. You were, you got, you got to, come on. I was man, feeling gotta, bad for a Kirby. You I was feeling bad. It. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing. It was sad to see one, cute little Kirby go. go, but now you can see it is, in fact, one point in the favor of Caldwell. Now Caldwell on match point. If they win again, then that should be the series. And with that being said, you do see the Dr. Mario versus a Pikachu now. And I got to tell you, I got to let you know something a little about me, Pyro. It's that I am not a fan of Dr. Mario. I do I love Mario, I love Luigi, I love Wario, but I don't like Dr. Mario. I mean, I grew up with my mom saying we gotta go to the doctor and I said, no, thank you. So I have a natural aversion to the doctor as well. And it appears that Pikachu does too. Now, this is Cupcake back on the stage. So uh, where I thought most high school teams had three players, it seems that Nandahala is sticking with Cupcake. and. Cupcake is experiencing the brutality once again. We're seeing that, uh, I think that's that forward special come out, which does reverse the trajectory of the Pikachu quite a bit, but it's being overplayed and it's starting to be read by Caldwell too well. And you see, actually, you know, I mean, it could very well be the same player, but often, you know, when we, when we have these smash uh, tournaments leads 
what have you. A lot of the time, you know, they won't bother switching profiles. They won't have a controller. So, I mean, it could be a different player. We just don't know because of their show up on the screen. But at the same time, it could very well also be cut through. There's, there's a lot of scenarios that could be going on right now for the side of Nantahala. But all we know for sure is that they're bringing out Dr. Mario. And if it is the same cut cake, uh, cut cake I would be really surprised if they went from a Kirby cut to a Dr. Mario. <laughs> I, I just don't I just don't see it. And you know what? I, I like Kirby. I just don't like Dr. Mario. Again, I'm gonna say it. <laughs> and for this exact reason, look how this match is going. Yeah, that, no, that's fair. I, I mean all I can say is two melee characters, so at least maybe they, they could be a little bit OG in the sense that those are the characters they're swapping with, but yeah, it's very likely that it is a different player. Either way, they need to find some kind of fundamentals to secure in this game because uh, look at the juggling happening from the Pikachu. It looks way too easy. Even the air attacks aren't landing for our Dr. Mario who's being directed into the air again and again. This ain't no lightning strike. This is a thunderbolt. Even the thunder, it's not supposed to have that much accuracy in Pokemon, but it's landing every time right now for Caldwell. Dr. Mario again takes flight, but able to dodge that thunderbolt. Yeah, and you know, I was actually getting ready to comment on that as well. Like, the thunderbolt is one of Pikachu's best moves, if not the best move, especially when uh, we're talking about the kickback. Pikachu doesn't have a lot of kickback. They have a lot of combos that are able to deal damage, and they can build up that damage percentage yeah. very high. Speaking of beautiful tech off stage, in order to, to get a smash against Dr. Win. Mario into the stage itself and force him into the blast zone. But you're absolutely right. That thunderbolt was hitting at such high percentage. That is remarkable, and that's how you can tell that you have a really good Pikachu player, because one of the biggest problems with Pikachu players that they face is that Three, it, it, it's, it's two, so difficult to one, land those thundershots and hit the moments. And you know what, Pyro? You might be right. This should and could be the very same cupcake because it's a great How about that? The return of the curve. You know what we haven't seen was uh, the neutral special. It just uh, it adopt the... Neutral B of the other player. I, I kind of want to see that. I kind of want to see the suck from the Kirby. Maybe we'll see it in some edge guarding tactics for some cheeky plays, but so far it seems to be the same. Caldwell on top, the favored team here. Most naturally, we see that edge guard. And yeah, I, I, the Cupcake didn't want to deal with any of that. There was a Pikachu B just in the wrong place in the wrong time. And, you know, this is the advantage that Pikachu had from the very beginning, from the very get-go, including against the match with Dr. Mario, was that they're just so speedy. Pikachu is, is a very speedy character, and they are utilizing that. And, again, one of the downsides to that is that Pikachu is a little squish. You know, they get like, they, they a little bit of damage in the game. Uh, it's the same fact they go far. But when they do hit, my goodness, they, they, they pack a wall. And you said there, it's hard to find the attacks for the Pikachu where there is that gargantuan knockback, but imagine building the damage with those combos and then hitting two of them in a row. That was lovely to see here coming out from the Pikachu of Caldwell. They're going to allow that hammer to strike from Kirby, dodge around, get the next touch, guard the edge here. Cupcake's trying to get back on, but not back away. Trying to knock some tilts here and getting some damage on, but a whole lot more damage needing to be piled up. Yeah, I'm, I was literally just waiting for the back so they all involved, but Pikachu decided to go up onto the up platform, not a strike, not by the way, but they can find themselves in. They get a good up throw and try to fire with the thunderbolt, and they're going to go with the dive and now 98% onto the Kirby. That is knockout potential. It is. We're going to see that delivering blow. There's the first attack, and all oh, this is a vulnerable position for Cupcake to be in! The juggling has continued here. From the Pikachu, they try to combo into that Thunder Strike, but it's just going to be the simple attack to blow them away. Caldwell in a sweep. Take this first best of three to win the group stage. I mean, as Hoka, again, you had mentioned it, the Pikachu, maybe not a lot of knockback potential, but when they combo, when they bring up the damage and rack it up, that is when we see those blowout moments. So Caldwell, what a round here to start it this off Three, right now with two, two points in the series. Go! Just Cupcake coming back again, this time on the pit. And it's so interesting because I have slept on pit. Um, for so long, I, I cannot begin to tell you <laughs> how long I have slept on pit, and I have been put to shame. You know, because I've seen some really good pit players of late, and I gotta tell you, they do really well against some uh, super types. And I think this would be a good match. However, I don't know how they go against a 
Jiggy Pop. And for that reason, you see that um, it was able to bring up that reflector, and that can reflect so much utility, so much range. But again, against a, a Jiggy Pop, it, it really doesn't do much. It hasn't. It really has not. And I also would consider that Pit is a very flighty character. I mean, he can recover from a lot of different stand points, but in this situation hasn't been able to put the moves together to recover back on the stage. That being said, look at how the Jigglypuff from Caldwell is floating back and forth, left to right, trying to nail his air attacks. And the wrist comes out for the final stock. Oh, Caldwell, you did not have to go up like that. They didn't, but they did. I mean, that Jigglypuff, uh, uh, definitely a lot more dangerous than how they appear. I mean, they're cute, they're adorable, they have nice bow, you know, the whole nine, but at the end of the day, they are very, very dangerous. And that's without even using their sing ability. You know, they didn't mm. even have to, to lullaby their opponent to get in some of those big smash attacks. You know, it was just constant pressure from the very get-go. And then even the offstage presence was good because Pitt had a hard time recovering. And that's how they lost one of their stocks. They just kind of fell to their own demise because of the ledge guard that was coming from the Jigglypuff from Caldwell. I love seeing what we did there. I mean, the other thing from these Caldwell players or player is that Three, it's just confidence. Two, it's just one, confidence. Sometimes go. you'll see, I think that's Yay is the player's name, just be stationary, right? They're waiting to see the attack set from Nentahala so that they can play against it, so they can adapt and punish where necessary. Right now, it is the ultimate punishment. Nentahala essentially is being grounded, saying, no, you're not allowed to be in your stage. And on this stage, this is my stage. Go to your bedroom. Get off my stage. Let's do it again and again. Just tries to get back. On is I didn't realize Jiggly Puff's back airs hit so hard. Like I'm watching them, they're constantly going for the back air. First of all, they go for the neutral stand, and they're able to get you know, the, the neutral attack stand, and that is dealing up the damage percentages, right? But then they follow it up with the back air, and all of a sudden, you're the top 15% just like that. My goodness, being able to send Pit into the blast, yeah, that's only the first time around here. Stadium I mean, the finishers from Ye are sublime. They know exactly what attack set is going to send them to the blast zone. Great beyond. Starting to rack up once again against Cupcake. And you know, we've seen a lot of FD on a Pokemon Stadium 2. We do have that pseudo battlefield stadium where there are platforms above. And he's trying to take advantage of that. Those arrows will tilt down. Yay, so you can't dodge them all by squishing to the ground. I love that little image though. Squish down and then the rest that came out of nowhere. side special to the air attacks tried comboing it with a fourth attack on the rest couldn't nail it but then came back and did it anyway so that is three rests in two rounds on that jiggly puff but more importantly captain Atsoka, that is three best of threes won by caldwell so they're gonna end up with a first win in this group stage qualifier sending caldwell into a great position during this qualifier run Oh, yeah, and they absolutely deserve it. You can tell by the way they play that, you know, they have definitely put a lot of time into their specific characters. And none of them were afraid to go off stage, which I found was very, very interesting, is that even though that you clearly have three different characters, uh, none of them were afraid to hold their own in an off stage air battle, yeah. you know. And, and this is to go to say for even, you know, characters like Jigglypuff, who are floaty, which we have seen from Kirby, who is pretty susceptible to a mm. lot of aerial attacks, especially when they're floating around for characters like Falco, you can get eaten alive. 
alive. And especially for characters like Pit. Pit, again, they love to go against floaty characters because they themselves, yeah. again, they have wings. They can literally fly. <laughs> so they can do a lot of damage when you're off stage and when you're floating around. But that did not scare our little Kirby or Ye coming from the side of Caldwell. They still went right to the face of the opposition. And even though they lost a stock, they took three in return. So again, this is a very fierce competitive smash team coming from caldwell no doubt about it looking forward to seeing more of caldwell through these qualifiers and i'll tell you what i'm looking forward to seeing more fighters as well this could have been a brawl tournament for all i'm considered i don't think any ultimate <laughs> specific characters were actually even seen so folks we do have more matches more high school teams more rounds to get through as myself pirate jay and captain atsoka will be back after a very short break with our next match in the Vessel Conference Qualifiers for the Spring 2024 of Ultimate. Hey everybody, welcome back to our conference qualifiers for Vessel. This is spring 2024 for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate 
My name is Fire J. I'm joined here with Captain Adsoka. We just got done with our first match. It was a banger of one, but Cap, there's more to get to. These qualifiers continue for that 25K prize pool. Oh, absolutely. I mean, honestly, when I heard that there was going to be a $25,000 prize pool, like I almost dusted off my sticks, you know what I mean? But then I remembered, <laughs> you know what, it's been about uh, nearly, what, 13 years since I've been in high school, a little bit more than that. So yeah, I, I don't think I qualify for this tournament. But but still, though, if you had told me in high school that I could have played Smash for $25,000, oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let's just say, you know, I definitely would have been in it to win it for I'm sure. So I know, I know that these young competitors are thirsty for wins out here. Here. so let's get ready to head into the next match and see who wants it more who is going to want the top prestige of being vessel champions and who's going to be walking away with that large chunk of the 25k prize pool still plenty of ways to go along this road but it all starts here and it starts right now that's right it all starts here we could be seeing our champion take their first match right here right now so let's get into it this is hey cap this is shelby it's battlefield versus... on battlefield <laughs> yeah it's the uh, zoomed in zoom out effect there amazing the witness <laughs> we've got shelby versus challenger here and this is a pac-man gotta get another point of view on this we got Pac-Man, okay, versus Dark Samus. I don't know if you favor one of these fighters over the other, Cap, but uh, uh, both are new ones today. I'll be honest, I don't favor one character over the other. I actually love really, I, I love both of them. Pac-Man, to me, is one of the most fun zoners to watch operate. And you, if you have yourself a good Pac-Man, then, you know, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, just watching them go to work, again, between the fire hydrant and, of course, you always have to watch out for the bell. And uh, those are the things that make Pac-Man the most dangerous is the unpredictability. But the one thing that you can always predict is that fire hydrant. That fire hydrant, more often than not, is going to do the thing that will get the most knockback. Uh, but whenever that bell surfaces, that's what you got to look out for. You can already see the fire fire hydrant coming out and with dark samus you know again another one of my favorites just because there's not too many gunner characters in smash overall so samus is that og gunner you know since since smash 64 that is the og gunner character and already you can see they are putting on quite a master class on how to use the gunner role and not only are they shooting that they're recharging it as soon as they shoot so they realize even if they don't want to use it all the time having that in your back pocket whether it's to use at a good time or just have as a threat throughout this game to make that pac-man reconsider is a good thing to have another good thing to have is to be up a stock on your competitor so it had already taken them out great dodge there from the shelby player taking them away and that's a grab and toss we'll see if there's that punish no Edge control just not working out quite as well for the Shelby. And you see, this is why Gunner characters work so good against zoners. Like I said, uh, Pac-Man is a phenomenal zone. Uh, and you can see just with that, they were able to let guard fairly successfully. But the reason that Gunners work so well against zoners, zoners try to play the spatial game. You know, they don't want you to move in. And Gunners, you know, again, they're all long range, so they can work with that. You want to play distance? Fine. Go ahead and play against uh, distance against uh, Dark Samus. And uh, you know what? You're going to get a run for your money. And if you try to close the gap, boom, you're just walking and running to one of those grapples. And as you can see, you know, the grapple from Samus also has a little range on it as well. So again, this is just a really good matchup through and through. Totally agree. Those long range weaponry uh, combined with those strong short range attacks. A great combo and a great antidote for Aiden against Scout Shark. Looks like they've got a solution for just about everything. Scout Shark still looking to take their first stock against Aiden. 62% on them right now, but a few more damaging blows. We'll combat them. Here's the edge guarding starting to take shape, though. Gonna miss again with that attack. There they are on the dodge. Trying to get that out of that grab. Scout Shark back on the edge. Taking back that stage control if they can, but again and again getting punished for it. Uh, you know what? I, I really love the homing missiles, too. You know, we talk a lot about the energy blast and the big energy ball. That's all fun. That's great. It looks cool. It looks awesome. But, you know, the finesse with the, with the, with the homing missiles that are coming from Samus, again, because the, uh, it's delayed, it's not as fast as the energy blast. So it's a little bit of extra finesse on the on, on uh, Dark Samus. So whenever you get a chance, just take a look at that homing missile because two or three times now, it has thrown this Pac-Man off, just off, kind of like off track. Really, it's kind of like a change up when you look at it. 
See if we can change up the trajectory of this matchup, though. Shelby trying to survive, trying to DI their way out of getting to the blast zone, but this is going to be a tough recovery. Second effort, not going to be there. Scout Shark ain't got no bark, ain't got no bite in this first round as Challenger takes the win. Yep, that thing first on the board there and uh, that was a, a decent match there and i'm looking forward to Three, this rematch two, going one, next rather go. we're gonna see a mess now Ness themselves is also an OG 64 character. You had to unlock them back then, and back then you didn't have to play the game to unlock them. It wasn't a DLC character. You just had to, you know, finesse the game a little bit. And unlock Ness. So we got, we got a couple of OGs. My absolute favorites in uh, the melee version of the game. You didn't have to unlock them. They're ready to go. You can swing that bat, go PK fire whenever you like. And we talked about antidotes. We talked about Samus having a good answer to just about everything. We'll talk about Ness being quite the response against Samus. They are recharging their health. Let me shoot out that blast. And so far, keeping the damage quite even. Okay, that F air just didn't land, but it will land there. And how about a combo with the PK Thunder? Trying to get another air attack. Dodging in towards Samus. Very risky and getting punished for it. Both fighters and high damage at this point. See that Ness is doing a really good job of nullifying a lot of uh, range attack and given that they have a lot of range of their own already. You can see the Pinky Fire has come out. It does land Pinky Thunder on its way out, but they get caught up in that down throw. But they're able to come through with the up air, trying to follow it up with another Pinky Thunder, and it's just a little off the mark. But again, you can see how Ness can be somewhat considered of like a pseudo zoner because they have some melee abilities, but they have quite a, a bit of range in the arsenal as well. Definitely some zoning capabilities, especially when they get that close long bungee attacks and follow it up with the PK Thunder. But I do think there's been a little more PK Thunder than I'd like to see there. Recharge capability just not fine team there on the bigger strike there from the Dark Samus. Aiden trying to make sure they do not be the first victim of this one. Stock here. Stock is going to hold on to us at first one. And how about that? They do survive. I'm sure I like their chances at surviving. You can see the very careful nature of Aiden right now, keeping the distance away from the nest and trying to get as much damage as possible. Only 35. It comes down to competitive smash, that could be a big 35. You know? like, it's only 30, it's only 35, but I think in terms of this matchup, that, that's a big 35. You know what I mean? Like uh, any any type of advantage to me is, is is good. You know, it's better than not. But regardless, we're getting right back into it already. And you can see the revenge stock did come in as it is two stock to two stock, and they're still just about even until finally we do see Samus applying the edge guard. And one thing I would like to see more of the Samus as we do get to see a beautiful back though, I want to see more of the minds, the names that come out from that back row. That's what I need to see more of, especially on this edge guard. Hey, well, you see some good edge guard at least just in the F smashes, but they did the down smashes. Oh, that guy just doesn't come in. Oh, and they couldn't recharge in time either. Wow. Scout Shark caught out with that blast. And again, takes the damage. It's really smart as the first attack, I think, from Aiden because they know they're not going to try to recharge. They're already at 0%, so probably the first best attack they can land on the last stock of Scout Shark. Like I gotta say, watching this uh, Dark Samus go to work here um, for the side of Challenger, it really makes me want to go back and play Metroid Prime on um, the GameCube. That, that was like my favorite Metroid Prime. And watching it in the it just makes me fall in love with I have that in my room. I got my GameCube and the Metroid Prime. So you let me know when you want that gaming sesh cap. I got you. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. I don't know if Scout Sharks can ask for another gaming sesh here with Aiden because it's just not going well. It was such an even affair at the start. They have brought it back a bit, but Scout Shark has to be really careful as they haven't done quite so well on these edge guarding situations. Grab gonna miss. Dodge from Scout Shark, but now they gotta land the damage because they're already above 100. Up uh, air gonna keep Ness in the air. Scout Shark with that PK fire followed by the jump. Able to dodge just that attack and able to get the grab as well. This could be the turn around that Scout Shark needs, but he's punished for the PK Thunder. Still staying alive, but this is treacherous territory and they'll be taken away. Yep, I gotta tell you, that dark sounds like uh, uh, absolutely marvelous. I mean, that was some of the best Samus. 
and again because the gunner character it, in itself like the the gunner role is just so nuanced uh, it definitely takes it a completely different place off than what we're used to but now we're going into the next matchup and we've got a Mewtwo taking on a I don't know how this one's gonna go this one's kind of sketchy I'm not gonna lie this is one where we just gotta watch the game develop I really think because well, as we probably have new players taking the stage right now, we don't know that for sure, but that's what we were told was the general format for high school teams have multiple players on their team and switch out after best of threes. Could this be the turnaround that, that team Shelby needs? That Mewtwo is definitely quite a flighty, quite a light character. If Byleth gets some strong attacks on them, they will get punished a little easily. But what we're seeing from this Mewtwo is really good response rates. I'm liking the dodges. I'm liking the uh, perfect timing on the shields just to keep the damage low. But that's what I'm talking about, Cap. They were on, what, 70% and got blown out of the zone? Uh, that's just a tough situation to be in as a Mewtwo. Yeah, you know, on paper, you know, if you if you hand me the bracket I'm looking at and I see there's a Mewtwo taking on a Violet, I'm immediately thinking that the Mewtwo is going to get waxed. Just because, in my opinion, and again, if I'm Captain, say Captain's Captain, but Mewtwo is one of the glass cannons in Smash. The other one that comes to mind, of course, is Little Mac, but two completely different types. Again, like you said, Mewtwo is very floaty, they're psychic, you know, they, they have different abilities in the ball, but they are both glass cannons. Deal out very quick, heavy damage, as you have just seen, as Mewtwo is able to take that first stock off of Violet. But at the same time, very susceptible to knockback. And I gotta tell you, Violet has a lot of knockback potential. Out of any, really, of the weaponry that you want to choose from the Violet as well. A lot of it can produce that strong damage, being able to dodge it, though. It's Scout Shark from that Shelby team. Still holding the stage as much as they can. And wow, that tail's got range. Even from under the stage there to knock away the Violet. But back on the edge and back on the stage. Challenger. Jump up them to the top platform. To release themselves from that foregoing attack. The tail. This is the sequence once again. Getting back with that grapple was the Byleth. Has Mewtwo in a very dangerous spot. Trying to get back. And just in time, they are able to do that with the up special. Landing back on the stage only to be produced away from it again. And, and, and again, just to reiterate, like, there's just so much in Violet's arsenal. We've already seen them keep the range with the spear, and then even when they miss the spear, they're able to come in with the back smash and just send Mewtwo to the glass. And again, great revenge stop uh, coming from the Mewtwo as well. And I, I gotta tell you, this is this match is a lot closer than I thought it was going to be in this one. Gotta respect it. Uh, I mean, the responses from the Shelby Mewtwo have been fantastic. Like, as soon as they die, they go full tilt to nail out the Violet if they can. And they have, but the problem is, as they're both on one stock, they're not gonna have that extra life to go at them. So they've gotta break through now. They've gotta play risky if they can. Scout Shark has even the damage. Getting things on there, both shielding, trying to guard. They know how precarious this situation is for the both of them. Dares to dodge into the grab. Fantastic work from that Scout Shark. As the Shelby team in a vulnerable situation, and Challenger is gone. Scout Shark brought out everything in the end there, Cap, for them to win. Yeah, that was a beautiful bait and switch uh, coming from the Mewtwo there, because again, you know, they're playing with their opponent again for the entire time. You know, they're they're jumping backwards. They're creating space in order. So that way, the Mewtwo can use a lot more of their ranged abilities and again, go for a lot of these aerial attacks. But this time they switched it up at the very end on the very last stock. Instead of jumping backwards, they jump forwards, landing the forward air, catching the Byleth off guard and then sending them into the blast zone. So again, that was a fantastic play coming from the Mewtwo. And kind of mix up their opponent. Well done. And that's going to be the first win going on to their side. I just love how it's like, yeah, you look at these two fighters and you don't love the chances for the Mewtwo. But then somehow, some way, and particularly in the way that you mentioned, Kat, playing the range game and then closing the gap when it's right, it's done extremely well. So here we are. Back on the same stage, Scout Shark, oh wow, already in a very low position, but they're very mindful of that recovery capability. And notice how they plummet so far down, Cap, it kind of makes my heart skip a beat, but they always get back to the edge. 
Oh yeah, and that's intense there too. They, they, you know, they're dropping all the way down low uh, again as a tactic against their opponent. They either want their opponent to chase or they want them to miss input the ledge guard so that way they can recover uh, a lot better. But yeah, anytime you see an opponent go down, it's 100% intentional, and it can be deadly too, because sometimes, you know, you can miss the leg and part of the so it takes a lot of practice and muscle memory to get that right, but speaking of, that, that big smash, again, that spear, so much range, so deadly, it would have took the first stock off of YouTube. Like part of that too was because Scout Shark failed to actually grab the edge, landed right above it. And a damaging blow from the spear. The grab able to produce something there though. And okay, New Shire's not gonna land. Instead, challenges it, gets right into it. Challenger doing true to their name, but maybe to their own demise. Great stage control and presence there from Shelby to get right back into this game, but has to be so careful with this stock. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, they did lose their first stock, but look what they got in return. 100% damage, if not more, off of that stock. So again, good ROS for any of my ec uh, economy mages out there. Good return on investment, or ROI, rather. So yeah, no no love loss for that violence. But again, now you can see Mewtwo going right back to work with, again, some questionable hits as that tail does manage to penetrate the stage. You'd love to see it. I'm still so surprised every time I see it, because not only does it penetrate the stage and hit their opponent, he also just recovers immediately on the edge. And it's like, did you did you teleport? I mean, I guess you two of all Pokemon could teleport. They do, especially with that, that up special. But nevertheless, it's going to be a fortunate miss there from Scout Shark. Well read by the Violet on Challenger, but be able to survive this again. We saw this before. On the first and fi the final stock from Shelby, they just come right into it ablaze. Hey, I'm getting a little deja vu here, Pyro J. As you can see, once again, we find ourselves one stock to one stock here at the bitter end. Now, keep in mind, if Shelby do manage to win this, and that's going to be a point going into their favor, uh, we can see if the best of threes. But right now, you can see Violet starting to try and apply a little bit more pressure as the Mewtwo does recover, goes for the ledge guard, and the recovery is there. They are just going back and forth now, trying to maintain stage control. But again, such long range, whether it's the tail on the Mewtwo or the, the javelin or the spear from the Violet. Both players are very, very mindful of the space that they have between each other. Trying to time this recovery well. Oh, it's the Violet, but they just can't land it. Scout Shark and still punishes. And how about this from the Shelby team? And that was great play. Like, in order to pull this off, you really have to know how to play against a Byleth, as we are going to continue on. And it looks like we're going to get Three, into the two, matchup. One, but uh, go. Again, you really got to know how to face off against a Byleth. You, 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 you can clearly tell that this one two player from Shelby has done a lot of work. They know exactly who they are against. I see these two players on the same stage, because that is two wins from the YouTube. Not a change on the scoreboard, so. Uh, in a best of five, but we'll have to figure out as we continue here. But I'll tell you what, Cap, it's a matchup that continues to get better and better. Look at the edge guarding there from the Mewtwo. They are fired up. Yeah, I mean, not many of the Fire Emblem characters have great recovery. I mean, out of them, Byleth probably has one of the better ones. Uh, has a little bit more range with that sword chain or whatever you like to call it, sword whip. <laughs> whatever type of advanced weapon that may be, it's definitely a lot more advanced than any of the other Fire Emblem characters. So, yeah, Byleth, again, just has a wide arsenal to work with, and then that's what makes him so good. Dangerous tried landing it with that sword whip, uh, but just couldn't get a little too high. Scout Shark staying low though. Yeah, he's recovering back to the edge. Dex managed to get back to the center of the stage. And that tail once again, utilizing the range that is available on the stage. Getting hit way outside here. Oh, there's an attack. There's not be. I don't think he can get back on the stage with that. Captain mentioned how meticulous the players have been to get back to the edge. That one was just off the mark, though. 
Yeah, again, you're, you're trying to do that so you can throw off the lead guard, which this Mewtwo has been perfect. Every single time that we've seen this Byron, go for the spear lead guard. It's always off the mark because the recovery comes. They put the shield up. They're able to block it. But that time, again, they just went a little bit too low. It was a misinput. It was mistimed. So anytime that you see them dive deep that, uh, like that, down to a safe go for recovery, just know it's not easy. They're just making it real easy. Menchot some plays aren't as easy as others, but when your opponent is stunned, it, it's kind of like an open net in Rocket League, right? It, it should be easy, most times it is, but still can't help but hold your breath. What happens? Another failed recovery from our Shelby to Scout Shark. Even on the final stock, again, it's like there's some kind of pact gap between these players. Say, so, yeah, do whatever you want, but on the last stock, let's start it out. Uh, on the last stock is, is when we fall, right? You, you, gotta, you gotta take it all the way to the final stock, 2-1-2-1 two, one, two, one fashion, and you wouldn't have it uh, any other way, but now it's starting to look like the edge guard is working. It worked on the last stock, and it works on this one. Each battle, a chance to grow. In the favor of Challenger, and now we have a pulse. We have a sign of life coming from the Challenger side. I mean, that, that was beautiful, oh, what I just witnessed there, Captain Atoka. I'm just going to be straight up honest. When you talked about how well that Mewtwo was able to dodge some of the edge guarding from that long spear, and it's like, wow, yeah, the recoveries have been perfect, but they kind of struggled on that last map. They failed twice on their first two stocks. That's how they were punished by it. Uh, they fell off the stage and then just got nailed by that spear. So while the Byleth did go through a couple stumbling blocks here and there, Cap eventually were able to gain their ground and get those finishers to land. Absolutely. And now that it seems like that series had concluded, what I'm beginning to understand of what possibly could have happened is that it was a best of three, but they just played all three matches. That's what it seemed like to me, because ah. at the end of the day, the scoreline was two to one. Clearly, the Mewtwo would take that in the favor of Shelby as they come out and they take the win. And then they just played out the last match, regardless of the outcome. So uh, that's what it appears to be to me. So I'm going to say that Shelby takes that win. Okay. Credit to Shelby then starting out the group stage quite well. And I'll tell you what, between Shelby and Challenger, these are two teams I want to see more out of in this Western conference of Vessel's uh, ultimate qualifiers because two very, very prominent players that we saw here today. There is no doubt in my mind about that cap, but I'll tell you what. Uh, I talked about wanting to see a couple of these teams more often in these qualifier rounds. Well, the good news is we are. Nantahala is coming back for our third and final match of these smash go arounds. And they're going to be facing off against Hibriton. We've got that match coming up right after this short break.
All right, welcome back, everybody. We have returned with more Smash Ultimate action. My name is Fire Jam, joined here with Captain at Soka. He's always saying, you know, tell me if I'm capping. This man's not capping. He only spits truth bombs all day long. And we've <laughs> been seeing some bombshell matches today as well for these Vessel Conference qualifiers. Uh, you know, Cap, we're down two matches. We got one more to go. We've seen a Mewtwo versus a Violet and Mewtwo win quite a few of them. I don't even know what to expect with the rest of the matches. No, I, I certainly don't as well. But lately, and you know, this is just from my experience in the Smash scene, uh, and maybe it's just down here, because again, believe it or not, like regional Smash, you know, they have their own nuances, um, you know, but particularly where I'm at in the Louisiana region, uh, Gulf Coast region, uh, we have seen a big rise of Paulutina who have been mm. absolutely dominating uh Paulatina have been uh the, uh their players the Paulatina players have been rising up in a major way i just got back from a LAN uh at cyphercon and uh it was a palu main that ended up taking the entire tournament 64 players registered only one to win and it was a it was a palu main and they didn't even switch up from throughout the entire time wow. they stayed on Paulatina <laughs> throughout the entire event and then even even more recently there was another event where another Paulatina ended up coming out on top <laughs> in the power rankings so again I, I would i would not mind seeing some palatina but granted that's just in my region let's see how people do it here of course in the more northeastern uh or more towards the east coast than the gulf coast i'm looking forward to seeing who we got coming up next in the lineup to see who's going to be going head to head beautiful yeah we are on the east here in north carolina but this is the western conference of north carolina so who's going to be center of the stage and coming out on top earlier we saw nantahala compete we're gonna see them again this time against Hibritain for this next qualifier run i think you and i are ready cap so let's get into it another match underway here and new fighters to take the stage and in oh this my. one we've got a fox and a kazuya we've seen falco so fox is gonna be reminiscent of that but this is still a new battle if kazuya doesn't take this i'm gonna be blown like i'm i'm it would not register in my mind that Kazia doesn't win this and, it, and like granted it does come down to the players okay it comes down to the players it's all about what's behind the sticks of course you I mean you can have like a fantastic phenomenal fox player but I just see so little foxes in so many Kazias that I get picked up and, uh, and Kazia my goodness especially going against the fox fox doesn't have a lot of range they don't have the verticality of Falco at least from my experience so they're gonna try and out brawl Kazia good luck that's all I gotta say yeah, it's like you're in full attack mode as that fox, right? But do you really want to do that against the Kazuya? Well, we're starting to see that transpire here. The lasers to get a bit of extra damage. And Kazuya says, guess what? I've got that range too. A couple more firing blows and off of the parry. How about the combo? Setting Fox up in the air, but no punish comes through. Fox get right back on that stage. Patient as ever. Cupcake is playing. Gotta give credit where it is due, but still hasn't found that finisher. Gotta get the shield, and there it is from Bunny. Able to kick out Cupcake. Yeah, and that was just good patience, good timing. You saw that the Kazia again, was just trying to wait for Fox to approach them to land one of those uh, big heavies, uh, especially when they were in rage mode. Uh, again, they hit so hard. Like you just saw that big boot. I mean, Kazia just hits like a truck. There's, there's no way around it. But uh, again, the Fox so far has been really good at uh, being able to play the distance for the most part. And that's where they have the advantage. Fox is a lot speedier than Kazia, so they're going to have to rely on that if they're going to take this one and we've seen that speedy playstyle get slowed down with the combos from cupcake look at how they're turning smash into street fighter it's one punch after a kick knocking them away very well and dahala with a big advantage what can cupcake maybe do to turn the tides earlier on cupcake we saw those struggles on the kirby this time much heavier a much more formidable opponent some would say but they have allowed for the damage to get near here bunny starting to juggle cupcake okay, getting some dodges in to steer clear of it there is the side special into the up air trying to get another combo on it and does smash them away bunny still surviving 
Yeah, and that's actually a really good thing for them because once Kazuya hits 100%, they go into rage mode, and you know they already hit hard. They hit like a boss. So whenever they go into rage mode, it's even more. <laughs> so, yeah, so, I mean, you're thinking that you're getting the upper hand against the Kazuya when you put them in 100%, but you're also making yourself vulnerable, and, and it just makes Kazuya that much more dangerous. So, again, the, the patience, the, the time, the dedication, the discipline that we have seen from Fox whenever Kazuya is in rage mode, you can tell they are putting the on that damage and right now unfortunately they are on the receiving end of a lot of that damage oh that's it <laughs> <laughs> they're not just on the receiving end they are on the blowout trend into the blast zone there you go and that is it you mentioned how kazia hit like a bus cap and it kind of looked like the fox was frogger trying to cross the street yet a semi truck of kazia was just running them Three, through two, again and again we'll kick off nantahala's run and the comeback is well on the day since they lost the earlier set they're here to punish and get that extra win on the day yeah, a lot of Kazuya players, shout out to the Handy Jazo. Jazo uh, plays a good bit of Kazuya as well as Street Fighter. They like to play the more, uh, well, I meant Ken from Street Fighter, Kazuya from Tekken. But, you know, they love to play those traditional um, fighter characters, FDC characters. So, whenever you see the more Kazuya players play, they go for the in and out. They go, they get a heavy hit, and then they back off. We've already seen that Kazuya can deal a lot of damage just with one or two hits. And that's where they get a lot of the damage. They get in, they get out. But with this Kazuya, we have seen a couple of combos and i'm sorry but if fox gets caught up in those combos they are going to the blast zone anytime you see one of those combos come out it's usually resulted in the stop one that's why we're seeing such agile presence right now from the hit britain fox and running out making sure that those shots that are landed do deliver a strong blow and they certainly do bunny first stock advantage i believe of the series some dash attacks are landing every time that fox does see a uh, a, a risk being taken on some of these f smashes they're going for it able to escape but then sent out of the stage landing again but the perseverance on a bunny right now Absolutely, they're getting big damage on this second stock. So even if they do drop this stock, you know, they don't have a lot of work to do to take the next off of Kazuya. So not only is Fox or Bunny currently playing it to their fourth stock, still at 169% damage, they're playing for next, and they get it! They, no! It was the Kazuya that came out on top! Oh my goodness, I thought Fox was able to take another. That, what a trade, but it looks like the revenge stock is going to come in in kind, and that extra effort they put in is going to pay off. Great play coming from uh, from Bunny. It's like good but punishing when you get all that damage, right? Because you're able to rack it up, but you also just sent Kikazia into rage. So it was like the second that Cupcake went into rage was the very second that Bunny was out of the stage. So obviously that damage done, and you can see it on the stocks, they're even in damage, but not the same in terms of lives that they have. Bunny happy to trade blows here. Kazuya and Cupcake definitely gonna have to start to take risks. One thing to take the stock a bit more early on. They're on this elevated platform that Bunny doesn't mind. We're seeing a lot more hopping, jumping, skipping around to try and dodge. These attacks from the Kazuya. Kazuya back in a rage. One blow will certainly take out Bunny. Uh, and you know, vice versa <laughs> as well. You know, right now, Kazia looking a little worse for wear, and that was a beautiful Akoya dash into the up air, followed by another up air, and we got debated by the elimination animation. But my goodness, it is getting close down to the wire. This Fox player has been getting all perfect inputs, literally going for dash attack after dash attack. And if they miss one input, they leave themselves susceptible to losing a stock. So, again, these inputs have been near flawless from the Fox so far, and they still have a stock to spare. At this point, I don't think I've ever verbally counted this high. The damage is getting that great, but so are the stakes. Bunny knows this. And a Britain, they ain't sitting. They're standing on business. The first win there for a Britain against Nandahala as we even out the set. Fox and Kazia appear to be evenly matched just enough. And Cap, you know what that means. I was going to say we got to run it back, but that ain't the case at all. Somehow, we've got Shelby and Challenger back on the stage. The Mewtwo is back. 
sure this could be a match that we've already seen, maybe? I feel like we have been here before, Smashville, uh, Miles versus Me Too. Are we seeing a replay? Because Challenger already has a point on the board, it looks like. So I think we are seeing a replay of a previous match. I mean, when I was watching the violin of Me Too, all I wanted was more rematches. So, you know, I, I feel like we're getting like a, like a VAR, like a re replay analysis here, like, what went wrong for the Violet? How did they get beaten by the Mewtwo? You know, we're seeing those ranged attacks again. We're seeing the Chicago. We're starting to see that Tailwind come through the stage again, but Violet does get the better of that. Um, yes, it's like a blast from the past, Cap. Absolutely. Um, you know, <laughs> it's it's a fun fact because, you know, Mewtwo isn't the only character that can hit through the stage and recover. Uh, and just as equally as annoying, King Beated can do it as well with the hand. Like, you know, Absolutely <laughs> So I understand the pain of this violence whenever they get to tell you through the stage. And my goodness, just watching King DDD do it is just as infuriating. You know, right now, again, you know, we're just seeing uh, remnants of what was a really, really good matchup. And I, again, I gotta give my kudos to this Me Too because I was not expecting them to put in the amount of work that they did to take on this violence. I mean, it was, it was such a good matchup. There's so much variety in the strategy as well. I mean, we're seeing the Nair comboed with the land and floor tilt action. A couple more forward airs to combine for some nice combos onto them. And okay, we got the switch up. We got the switch up. So the, 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 the stream says we've seen enough. Mewtwo, it's time to see Britain versus Nandahala once again. If we remember, folks, these two are even. We saw win the first one and hit britain in the next so even at one apiece both are fighters here cap it comes down to who can take the edge in this third stage let's see if they can and once again we're on our uh, green screen backgrounds here of <laughs> battlefield you'll love to see it we all love battlefield uh let's see if they can take the advantage because once again you know we're seeing the speed versus the the absolute strength of Kazuya, and, and this is what Fox has been so good at. And I, you know, I mentioned it in, in the very first game. They're gonna have to rely onto that speed to outpace the Kazuya, because again, if they if they decide to go toe for toe and trade blow for blow, that's just uh, a fight for everyone against Kazuya. I personally really want to see this Kazuya start to punish um, the, the Fox just for their swift movements and their jumps for seemingly no reason. I mean, they're trying to put the Kazuya's head on a swivel, and I see that, but there's a quick turnaround. Exactly from Cupcake, the jump from the side B, like, there's a really mindful reaction set coming out of this Kazuya from Nantahala, and they seem a bit more composed in this round, which I'd like to see, and of course I have to say something, Cap. The composure breaks at a moment's notice. And again, it's really difficult when you try and go that low. Um, and again, it was just a mistake, but, but we're, we're going to see if they can try and make that up. Like I said, it doesn't take much for Kazi to take snaps, but it's just all about capitalizing on opportunities. So far, so good. I mean, if they were able to take the stock now, then it'd be a fair match uh, going into the last stock. But right now, this Fox is just not going to allow that happen. They got an opportunity when Kazi had to miss input, couldn't grab ledge, and they're going to make the most of it. Not that ledge taking their time that normal recovery followed by the attack which i love but again they find themselves on the edge stage control from hit britain has been fantastic from bunny just continue to punish this guy that tries to get back on the stage but all it takes you said cap that is just a little bit from Kazi to send them out of there and there it was exactly what they needed now it's all about surviving up to 145 combos there from buddy landed more attacks can they get the one to be the finisher up on the top platform is cupcake but the stakes are down the chips are down and the money's up for her britain the second round one in a row first series so that should be the first point going to her britain but again that was some great play coming from cupcake and now we're going to see a switch up here as they are switching off the Nikazia back to the kirby some interesting picks here as they're going to try and fight the speedster with a little bit of moodiness. let's see how this works yeah i can almost hear it in your voice there uh 
cap, and you're just as afraid as I am for this Kirby. It's so funny, because is there even a more abrupt change? Let's get to the Kirby. I don't know. I can think of maybe some heavier, slower players, but still. Let's see how the adaptation comes through. We, we saw the struggles on the Kirby last time around. We know that those recoveries are still available. Down B is going to turn into a dodge. Oh, and that forward smash just did not land down there neither. Dodging the quickness from this fox continues to be the advantage for him. I mean, I just got to give a, a shout out to Cupcake again if this has been the same player. They have definitely got several characters in their arsenal in which they are first in. And, you know, that in and of itself is pretty impressive to, to be able to, you know, hold your own not just as Kirby or as Fox and you know, many other characters as well. So again, I think it's Cupcake credit with Kirby too. I agree. I agree. The, the, those one tricks, you know, you just called out a Palutena that has won a tournament. Not even switching off. Like, that deserves respect. So do our multi fighter players. They say, a main. That's a main. I don't know about that. Nice parry, by the way, from Buddy. Get around these forward smashes that Kirby seems to rely on. He's down B. He's a little juggling happening here. That up belt, uh, excuse me, that up smash is not gonna work out. Actually puts the Fox in a vulnerable position. And it will even out the stocks for now. Recovery now coming in from Cupcake. They were able to use the up B, but now they're falling susceptible to once again those up tilts like you had mentioned earlier, especially when they land on that upper platform. But, you know, I gotta tell you, Bunny is just absolutely just rough. I mean, again, you can see the difference of the dash attacks. They are not missing an input, and we have seen that even back when they were playing against Akazia. And, you know, since they were actually, I think, having more trouble on Akazia, the they are just warmed up now and are just 100% locked in. I feel that training uh, exercise in Super Smash Brothers where it's just that one punching bag. You see how much damage you can get onto it. I mean, the attack looking more and more flawless from Bunny. Oh, 80 damage up now. We're starting to see that resurgence from Cupcake, and the hammer actually does land. I think Buddy far and out of the stage, but there's no advantage. The recovery is almost instantaneous from Bunny because of how quickly that box can land, grab stage control, and combat it once again. Yep, once again, Charlie, not now, trying to get it to land, but uh, they're able to get some damage on the back end, but not much. Trying to get the thwomp action going down in the center stage, not going to be any good. As we are going right back to the action, and actually give it to Cupcake, they are going right to this second stock, wasting no time, and that'll do it. A 32% on the last stock, that's going to be a fair fight going into this last and final bout. I will, I'm going to give credit where it's due as well. Cupcake said, I'm done. Being passive, patient, I'm risking it all. And here we are to do just that. No change in strategy now. Gotta put everything forward here. Set up, he should have been expected a little more there from Bunny, but they took the damage from it. Instead, here it comes on the edge guard, but the side B. Spots a way out. Legs once again, but the fury of the mallet will reign superior. Get the damage advantage for Cupcake, but the juggling occurs once again. Down B into the air dodge. And he side smashes, but yeah. finally lands for Cupcake and sends Bunny away. It was fantastic. Again, they came back from a stock down, was able to take the stock, and even with a 32% damage deficit there on the final stock, they managed to make the comeback happen. And again, that was some fantastic play uh, coming through from Cupcake, who we have seen, you know, go through the ringer today, back and forth consistently. And then, you know, even when they were playing on the Kazia, it seemed like that was the closest they were going to get. But no, they stick and they go back to their tried and true comfort pick, which was the Kirby. And then that's when they are able to get the dub. So again, great. Great plays being made by Cupcake and a well-deserved first win. Well-deserved indeed. I couldn't agree more. Nantahala, we have saw we saw all the changes, right, from the, the, the Kirby to the Kazuya to any other fighter as well. But even against the Fox, there was still that, that regained potential, that revenge, that survive and advance strategy that we saw out of the Kirby just fighting 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 and although Bunny was very agile got some dodges got a beautiful parry on their second stock still 
uh, that Kirby was able to get in front of it. So kudos to Nantala. Maybe they didn't start the day on the right foot, Cap, but they brought it right back. Yep, they did. And, you know, once again, I think we're in a scenario where um, the best of three series had already been decided. I think it was her her bitten or her Britain that was able to take it. Uh, and mm. they just played out all three. And on the third and final match, we got to see the, uh, the Kirby get their one win in the series. But at the end of the we day, it, yeah, it ends two to one. But I just wanted to clarify that, you know, from what I have seen, it, it does seem as though that her Britain was able mm. to take that series two to one overall over. um over challenger oh i'm sorry over nantahala nantahala yeah yeah nantahala so yeah again big ggs and uh her britain uh once again able to take that win two to one in the series well played her britain thanks for the clarification there cap that was uh that was confusing me for a little bit there uh we saw the wins and we see the potential from all these teams and all these players moving forward and folks if you want to still be tuned into the action moving forward then Really, don't go anywhere. Make sure you subscribe on at Vessel GG here on the platform. They're going to be running lives not only for this Western Conference on Thursdays throughout this month for the qualifier run, but for all the conferences in North Carolina that compete in these titles. It's not even just Smash Ultimate. It's also for Valorant on Wednesdays and Rocket League on Fridays. So the qualifier run here for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate for that $25,000 grand prize will continue throughout the month. My name is Pirate J. Thank you again so much to Captain Atsoka. We got the freaking Brian on the back end making things look nice. So shout out to those guys. And from Vessel, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll go ahead and we'll see you next time.